So the very first point in this Superior Court of Ontario ruling is, by this justice, is when did it become illegal to ask questions, especially in the courtroom? Can you comment on that? Well, it's very striking to me. Right now, uh, many lawyers like myself have been wondering this. We've been looking at this particular issue. Warning. Censorship. Adam Sos here for Rebel News, and since the onset of COVID-19, many people have begun to question the judicial process here in Canada. The courts are not meant to be used as a tool for the government to suppress questioning and to enforce arbitrary health mandates. That is not what the courts do. The courts are meant to uphold our charter rights and freedoms and to enforce the Criminal Code of Canada. We've seen many cases like the case of Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky, many of the other pastors across Alberta who have been arrested, across Canada who have been ticketed, and the truckers all facing arguably political persecution that is being enacted through the courts. People have doubts about the justice system in Canada. But in a refreshing ruling in the Superior Court of Ontario, Justice Pazarat has issued a 14-point preface to a ruling. Ultimately, this ruling relates to a fairly minor family court decision. But his preface generally decries what the courts have been doing across Canada and states that Canada must return to the rule of law. I'm going to be joined in just a moment by Derek Fromm to break down this ruling and to talk about how Canada is making its way back to courts doing their job. So this was a proceeding between two parents, estranged parents, regarding a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old child. Uh, and what happened is these parents had a disagreement about whether these children should be vaccinated against COVID-19. And this went to court, very sad that these things happen, but they do. The court found very clearly both parents were acting appropriately. There is no undue influence. The parents weren't bad parents. None of those things were at issue. But what the court did was extraordinary for our times. It was apply the law as everyone understood it two years ago. How should a court decide this matter? A court should look at what's in the best interests of the child. And the court very clearly said, you know, part of that determination is for the court to decide what the child wants. And so the court did, made that assessment and considered what the children actually wanted to have happen to them and both expressed their view to a psychologist who then relayed that to the court and the court weighed that and at the end the court said, I'm not going to order these children to be vaccinated because they're both opposed to being vaccinated and they have very real concerns that are grounded in, in good, solid reasoning and appropriate for their level. And the court said, you know what, we just, we can't allow children to be vaccinated against their will. That is just too terrible a state to be in. Well, and sadly and somewhat surprisingly, this probably before COVID-19 would have been business as usual. This would have been seen seen as just a, a sensible ruling by a sensible uh, justice. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in, the, in the world of COVID-19, mm -hmm. this is a rare exception. And this is largely generally a family court proceeding, pretty standard. Mm -hmm. But what is truly exceptional, and the reason you sent this to me, was the actual ruling, the words by the justice, and I'm going to make sure I get this right, Justice Pazarats. Mm -hmm. um, he effectively issued a 14-point statement as a mm -hmm. preface to this ruling that decried so much of what has been going on in courts. And I think it extends beyond the Superior Court of Ontario. It extends it federally. Um, and hopefully judges will be reading this. Some of the content within these 14 points is, is, is very poignant and it's something that mm -hmm. I think everyone should be viewing. So I want to actually go through and kind of talk about some of the things yes. point by point. So the very first point in this Superior Court of Ontario ruling is by this justice is when did it become illegal to ask questions especially in the courtroom can you comment on that well it's very striking to me right now uh many lawyers like myself have been wondering this we've been looking at this particular issue and wondering if we can bring this matter forward are we allowed to question whether or not vac hey guys really sorry to interrupt this conversation but some of the content that we discuss is simply not allowed on YouTube. Their YouTube police will shut us down. If you want to see the full video, you're going to have to go to rebelnews.com or as always, you can click the link in the description below. Hey guys, we love having these conversations and if you want to support us telling the other side of the story, one of the ways you can do that is by going to rebelnewsstore.com and grabbing some swag. You can use the code ADAM10 to get 10% off your first order and then you can represent Rebel News wherever you go.